today's video I'm going to be talking about a fragrance in my collection that I've had for a couple of months now. I received this off Fragrance X, surprisingly, considering it's a vintage fragrance, and it's heavily discontinued. I was able to get this for a very good price, and if you guys are into the classic fragrances and you like the sound of this review, I would highly recommend you go over to Fragrance X and pick yourself up a bottle of this. Because like I said, it's very, very rare. The fragrance I'm going to talk about is a very classic fragrance, but not very, not actually many people know about this one. It's called Lord Molyneux. Stay tuned. So here's a little bit of information for you guys about the House of Molyneux. It was founded by a gentleman called Edward Molyneux. In 1919, he opened up his first boutique in London. He was known as a dressmaker, and several celebrities were very much into his designs, including Vivian Lee, Margaret Layton, and Greta Garbo. And his fashion designs were even admired by Christine Dior and Pierre Balmain. So this is a designer that does not get a lot of recognition, and his fragrances don't get a lot of reviews on them. So this is a fragrance that, like I said before in the beginning of this video, is discontinued, might be hard to find depending on where you are, but I was able to get this on Fragrance X for a very good price. I'm really happy to have this in my collection. It's incredible. I love the smell. I love the bottle design. And here is what it looks like. So this is Lord Molyneux. This one came out in 1988. And uh, not many people know about it. I haven't been able to find a perfumer on it. I love the bottle design. It's absolutely incredible. We get Eau de Toilette on the back there. It says, one fluid ounce Molyneux Paris. 30 ml bottle here. I love the hole in the back. You have to put your finger in there in order to spray it. And the juice is absolutely beautiful. It's really dark. I absolutely love it. So what else can I tell you about this fragrance? Well, not a lot, unfortunately. There's not a lot of information about it apart from a Fragrantica, a Fragrantica page where there is some list of notes. There's also a few reviews. Other than that, not a lot of information about this fragrance. It's a bit of a ghost, to be honest. So let's go ahead and smell it. It leaves like a bit of a, uh, it leaves the color of the juice on your hands. So if you have a white shirt, you might want to uh, spray on your skin for this one, guys. It might stain your clothes. So in terms of its smell, this is right up my alley. This is definitely my kind of fragrance. So according to Vagranica, we have a cords of woody, aromatic, Warm, spicy, powdery, and earthy. I would also add green and alamalic in there as well, without a doubt. I'll post a picture of what the box looks like. I do have the box somewhere, but I think I've put it in storage, so please forgive me. I really like the box, how we get Lord Molyneux in this gray with thin black stripes, and I really like the picture of the, the man with the top hat and the beard. Really like it. And let's get to the notes, shall we? So... According to Fragrantica, I'll put the screenshot of the notes on the screen for you guys. In the top we get cardamom, we get peach, and we also get bergamot. So in terms of the middle notes, we also get cedar and mahogany. And in the base we get vetiver, musk, tonka bean, and sandalwood. Now, when I first spray this, I get a very herbaceous, woody, green, animalic smell. Very similar to fragrances like Sybaris by Puig, and also a little bit similar to Bogart's Witness to a degree as well. But Lord Molyneux takes a little bit of a different approach because this one, like I said, it's herbaceous, it's green. Whereas the other two I've just mentioned there, Witness has cinnamon and the Sybaris is definitely an animalic scent. This one doesn't have any of that, but what I get out of this is a very strong animalic touch, kind of civet-like, musk, I mean, musk is in the fragrance, so that would make sense. There is a little bit of a fruitiness from the peach in the opening. Of course, peach was known in a lot of 70s and 80s fragrances. It was in a lot of old-fashioned perfumes to create a, a balmy, fruity kind of smell. It was used a lot with the aldehydes to give it that, that nice sort of airy, fruity vibe in a lot of fragrances. This one... The peach is toned down, but I do definitely get this cardamom. Uh, I do definitely get a bergamot as well, giving it a little bit of a citrus touch. But without a doubt, this is definitely a woody scent. So what I get more than anything in this is I definitely get the middle notes. So I definitely do get that woody heart, that cedar wood, 
that mahogany. And in terms of the, the, the dry down as well, there's definitely a greenness to it as well. A vetiver, a little bit of a vanilla-ish kind of touch with that tonka. And of course with sandalwood as well, adding more of a woodiness. It's really an incredible fragrance. It has this mustiness to it. It kind of reminds me of the same vein as Dana's Taboo with the fact that that one reminds me of a, you know, like this, the smell of an old library or something. I definitely get that vibe with that and I get it with this also. And the interesting with, thing with this fragrance is someone on Fragranda actually said that if Hogwarts School from Harry Potter had a smell, it would be Lord Molyneux. And I found that really interesting. And I've, I've read that review before purchasing the fragrance and I must say it is interesting. I don't know if I would agree with that, but there is definitely a old fashioned smell with this fragrance, no doubt. And for the fact that it was released in 1988, again, I mean, this Sybaris by Puig was also released the same year. It's definitely got this 80s smell to it, no doubt about it, but it's done in a way that isn't replicated in a lot of other fragrances. So, you know, we always talk about the, the highlight fragrances of the 80s. There's Dracar Noir, Lapidus Porom, maybe even Kuros, uh, Trasadi Womo, uh, there's a lot, you know, Salvador Dali Poam, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of fragrances that we would consider benchmark 80s fragrances. This one with a coming from Molyneux, which is not a very well-known house, means that this one was really pushed at the back of most shelves in most perfume stores back then. And even now, I mean, this, there's a reason why this is heavily discounted on Fragrance X. You've really got to be a fan of these type of fragrances to pay so little money for it. If you're starting out in fragrance, you do not want to get yourself a bottle of this simply because it is a bit on the strong side. It does have this old school vibe to it. So you, like I said, you've really got to like those older fragrances. I happen to love it. I've loved old fashioned fragrances since I started my fragrance journey. This happily fits into my collection as being one of the best, in my opinion. And Molyneux, towards the end of the 80s started to develop 30 mil bottles so you can find bottles like this in their other fragrances pretty much of course this one being lord molyneux you can also find a, a very famous fragrance from molyneux also called captain which comes in a very similar bottle to this so yeah but if you can find this fragrance i would highly recommend it it is very very nice if, like I said, if you're into those old school fragrances. And I mean, just to show you guys how uh, dark the juice is, you can't actually see it on my camera, which is a shame. My front camera doesn't focus. You can actually see it dripping a little bit with uh, the dark colored juice there. Not a lot more I can say about this fragrance. It opens up very herbaceous. There's a little bit of a fruitiness. There's definitely a spice from that cardamom, which is very, very nice. A little bit of a citrus as well from the bergamot. Uh, that woody heart is just absolutely divine. So if you are into dark wood smells, so for example, mahogany, which is one of my favorite wood notes, it's not a lot. It's not, you, you, it's not often that you find it in a lot of other fragrances. Usually cedar or sandalwood uh, is, um, is more popular. But this mahogany note in this fragrance is very, very nice. I really do enjoy it. But the cedar as well and that sandalwood in the dry down really adds to the the overload on the woodiness. The vetiver is also very nice, adding that green kind of grassy smell. Again, musk. The musk in this, I would say, is pretty strong, very animalic, kind of realistic, I should say. It, it, it's definitely not a clean musk, but it, rather a dirty musk. And a little bit of a creaminess in the dry down from that tonka, creating, a, again, a vanilla bean sort of smell. It's nice. It's very nice. And, uh, yeah, again, it it has an old vibe to it. Kind of reminds me of some again of like an old library or some sort of old building. Going back to that person's review on Fragrantica, uh, when they said it reminded them of Hogwarts. I can kind of see what they mean because of, you know the whole old vibe that it has. But it's incredible. It's really incredible. I would highly recommend you check out Lord Molyneux. I had to bring you guys a review on this. I've had it for a few months now. I posted this on my Fragrantica when I first my Fragrantica. Sorry, on my Instagram when I first got this fragrance and I loved it then and a lot of people seem to really still like it today. 
mainly people who are collectors in fragrances that you know it's definitely one that people admire and they're like whoa that looks cool i might get that that's the type of person i am and yeah it's incredible so i'm not wearing this today actually i'm not actually wearing any fragrance today i don't know if i'll show i don't know if i'll wear this to be honest with you guys it's uh it's a bit strong <laughs> if i'm gonna wear this ever i'm gonna probably wear it in the the company of myself where I'm, when i'm not seeing anybody i'm seeing my girlfriend from work soon so i'm she doesn't exactly like this fragrance so i don't know if i'm gonna wear it for her today but like i said it's a it's the type of fragrance you wear for yourself you admire it in yourself not many people are going to appreciate it these days but for what it is it's still a relatively nice fragrance so Again, you have to be into the old school fragrances to like this. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone starting a collection. No way. It's too strong. It won't get the respect. Uh, so this fragrance demands respect if you're a collector and you like those old school fragrances. So, yeah. That is the end of my review. I really do hope that you have enjoyed it. It really means a lot that you guys are watching my videos and, of course, subscribing to my channel. I don't like to ask people to, to subscribe because I feel like it's... It's really something that you have to do if you want to do it. It's up to you guys if you want to subscribe to my channel. But the fact that I have over 5,000 subscribers now, I uh, consider myself very lucky. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. You are incredible. I will see you all in the next video. Thanks all so much for watching. Keep smelling good. And bye-bye for now.